So right now, the Supreme Court is um, literally weeks away from a announcing a decision over arguments they heard in April over the legality of the decision to add a citizenship question to the United States census for the first time in its history. Remember, the census is required by the Constitution. The Constitution does not call for the counting of citizens. It calls for the counting of all persons within the United States at the time of the census, period. That's exactly what it does. To suggest that our founders did not know the difference between persons and citizens is absurd. Because, of course, they did. And it has been suggested that the reason why the Trump administration is adding that question has nothing to do with any compelling government reason, state interest, or interest of the people, but rather they're suggesting that it's being done to intimidate immigrants and to deny areas where immigrants are located representation and services because that's the way congressional districts are uh, are designed this case was heard by the supreme court in april they are also um like i say weeks away from um from uh from making a decision at the time the trump administration argued that the benefits of obtaining more accurate citizenship data offset any damage stemming from the likely depressed response to the census by minority groups and non-citizens. And it dismissed the charges that the Commerce Department had simply invented justification for adding the question to the census as unsupported by the evidence. A majority of the Supreme Court justices seemed inclined to accept the department's explanation the question was needed to enforce the Voting Rights Act and appeared ready to uphold the administration's authority to alter the census question as it sees fit. The idea that the Voting Rights Act in some fashion, uh, because uh, there are requirements uh, that you uh, represent, that districts have a certain amount of, uh, of minorities uh, are, show some measure of representation because there was a time in this country, like, um, I don't know, months ago when certain states would try and gerrymander around uh, different races. And so uh, the Supreme Court, as of a couple of days ago at least, looked like they were heading to accepting this argument from the Trump administration that there was a rationale behind it that had to do with maintaining the Voting Rights Act. And... and that 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 offset the damage that would be done to this constitutionally mandated census. Well, the New York Times has this story that a guy named Thomas B. Hoffler, who was uh, near mythic status in the Republican Party as the Michelangelo of gerrymandering, the guy who built the partisan maps had done all the sort of algorithms and the studies that give us outcomes in places like Wisconsin where you have Democrats getting 56% of the vote and Republicans controlling 64% of the seats in the state legislature. So he died last summer. And uh, his daughter went to go clean up his states. Apparently, they uh, his estate. Apparently, they'd been estranged. And um, she got uh, one of the things she found was all these uh, hard drives. And on those drives, it showed that he had written a study in 2015, concluding that adding a citizenship question to the census would allow Republicans 
to draft even more extreme gerrymandered maps to stymie Democrats. And after months of urging President Trump's transition team to tack the question onto the census, he wrote the key portion of a draft Justice Department letter claiming the question was needed to enforce the 1965 Voting Rights Act which ended up being the rationale the administration later used to justify its decision. Now, it's quite clear he was writing an alibi. Those uh, documents have now been cited in a federal court filing on Thursday of, of this today by opponents seeking to block the citizenship question. So apparently it went down like this. It's pretty crazy. But he wrote that by adding this question, it would depress minority response and non-immigrant response to the census. He had done exhaustive analysis of Texas state legislative districts. Texas, of course, uh, has often had their districts found to be racially drawn. <laughs> Concluded that such maps, if they um, did not include all the people there and represented only people who were non um, who were non Hispanic whites. Such maps would be advantageous to the Republicans and non-Hispanic whites and would dilute the political power of the state's Hispanics. The reason, he wrote, was that the maps would exclude traditionally Democratic Hispanics and their children from the population count. Because you have many families where you have mixed immigration status. That would force Democratic districts to expand to meet the Constitution's one-person, one-vote requirement. In turn, that would translate into fewer districts in traditionally Democratic areas. And a new opportunity for Republican mapmakers to create even stronger, stronger gerrymanders. The strategy carried a fatal flaw, however. The detailed citizenship data that was needed to draw the maps did not exist. The only existing tally of voting age citizens, Mr. Hoffer's study stated, came from a statistical sample of the population largely used by the Justice Department to verify that the 1965 Voting Rights Act was ensuring the voting rights of minority groups. And so Hoffer wrote this memo saying that we need to add this question. And the court filing filed today describes two instances where Mr. Hoffeller's digital fingerprints are clearly visible on the Justice Department actions. One was a document that from the Hoffeller drives created on August 30, 2017, um, as the wooing of the Justice Department was nearing a crescendo to get them to do this. Wilbur Ross was trying to get the Justice Department to give him a, a justification. The document's single paragraph cited two court decisions supporting the premise that a more detailed citizenship data would assist the enforcement of the Voting Rights Act. That same paragraph appeared, later, uh, appeared uh, word for word in a draft letter from the Justice Department to the Census Bureau. He wrote the letter, or the key portions of the letter that the Justice Department sent to the Census Bureau saying that we need this information. He developed the alibi and then he literally wrote it and they used it word for word. The second instance involves the official version of the Justice Department's request for the citizenship question. A longer and more detailed letter sent to the Census Bureau in December 2017. That letter presents nuance and technical arguments that current citizenship data falls short of Voting Rights Act requirements, right? The Justice Department has 
citizenship data that it is gleaned from these districts to enforce the Voting Rights Act, but they're now asking formally of the Census Bureau, will you ask this question so that we can get this data? And these arguments enumerated in this letter are presented in exactly the same order and sometimes with identical descriptions, like building blocks, as in Mr. Hofeller's 2015 study. So the Supreme Court is now aware of this stuff. And remember, this case rides on whether there was a legitimate need by the Justice Department to get this information to fulfill its obligations under the Voting Rights Act. And we now know that all of their justifications, the key portions of their justifications, the fulcrum of their justifications, came from a guy who did a study on what would happen to Republican fortunes in various states if we managed to undercount the number of legitimate Hispanic voters in these districts. So it's going to be interesting to see where uh, the Supreme Court lands on this case, the question of the census question. It's going to be sad because we know how this is going to work. And uh, also on the, on the case of gerrymandering, because it's quite clear that when you allow excessive partisan gerrymandering, you incentivize all sorts of horrible behavior and you actually begin to corrupt even the chief law enforcement agency in the country, like the Justice Department, that is now lying as to the reasons why it requested this information. It's unbelievable. It's an unbelievable story. All right, let's go to uh, the phones. 